Hey boys and girls, Jim here once again, and we're going to take a look at something that's really entirely different from what you normally see on my channel. And, well, that's kind of hard to say these days, isn't it? Because I've been trying to experiment with a lot of different things, and a lot of my recent uploads have been production knives and stuff like that, so... Yeah, I'm kind of expanding my world a little bit, and that's good for everybody. But today, we're going to be taking a look at a Steve Skiff cohort. And the reason why this is so different for me is the fact that this is the smallest folder I think I own at this point. I do not look at knives this small. They don't interest me. I don't generally have a use for them. But there's a story as to why I bought this when I was at the Blade Show just a few weeks ago. Before I get into all that hubbub and bullshit, let's get into the knife itself and take a good look. And hopefully you'll pick up on it and see right away what it was that attracted me to this knife, regardless of its size. This is absolutely gorgeous in pretty much every respect. The detail work on here for such a small knife, and for really what is a very simplified design, is damn incredible. Let's start off with some basics. Number one, it is a three-inch blade. Three-inch blade doesn't exist in my collection. It's just something that, just again, it really doesn't interest me. And to give you an idea of how small a three-inch knife is, this actually makes my Tarsus look big. So I'll put it up next to my Brad Southern Tarsus. Try to bring all these into range if I can. Okay, so put them butt to butt, as everything in the world should be. And you see, again, there's that quarter-inch difference, and that really is a big difference. Now, you've got kind of a skewed angle here, so the skiff or whatever's closer to the camera is going to look a little bit larger than it really is. But if we were looking straight down, you would see an even greater difference. Going into a three and a half inch knife, and that would be the Rockstead Shin. You guys know that is still one of my ultimate favorite knives ever. And you really begin to see just how small the skiff really is. And then for comparison to a three and three quarter inch blade, I bring out what is still the king of my collection, my Frank Fisher Battle. And putting that butt to butt, holy shit! Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty big difference. So there's your basic size idea. So it's a three inch blade, four inch handle. So you've got uh, just about seven inches overall. So it's a very compact, easy to carry knife. Uh, blade material is CPM 154, great steel. Uh, you see a lot of knives that are a lot more expensive than this on my channel and CPM 154. Uh, of course, the uh, handle is all 6AL4V titanium, beautifully milled, and then he's done some really, really nice anodizing work in there. Anodize the standoffs, anodize the clip, and you'll notice my camera, there we go, the inside of the frames anodized in that beautiful blue. So you've got the blue pocket clip, a blue to purple pivot, blue standoff, I'm mean, sorry, a uh, blue thumb stud. Then you have the blue inside of the lines, blue interior on the frame. Very classy, very cool. Uh, it is running on IKBS. Now, not a lot of guys do uh, standard folders, especially in this size, on IKBS bearings. But it was a really great idea for him to do so because that was the second half of what sold me on this knife was the action. Hello! What a great finish on that blade. And uh, here's the kicker. Um, the prices on this start at 500 bucks. This was $500. Actually, I kind of beat up the dealer a little bit, and, and I actually got it from him uh, for 475 because we've done prior business. Um, uh, Scott Gentili over at Blade Parade, he happened to be set up at the Blade Show. So this is what happened. Basically, I was wandering around the show. I'd already made a couple of my bigger purchases, and I knew I wasn't going to buy a lot of knives. I had no intent at that point to buy a knife. I was uh, entered into a couple of lotteries, and I was kind of waiting to see what happened with those. And I walked by Scott's table, and he had a whole bunch of really great knives. He had some Walter Randolphs, and he had, I mean, he had some really crazy stuff. He, he's just a really crazy collector at this point of really great stuff. And I looked in, and I saw these two really cool flippers. 
and I asked them if I could touch them and I could play with them and they were just amazing amazing quality the materials that were used on those particular knives didn't really interest me but the knife itself did he says well I've got a couple more made by the same guy I said who is he, he says his name is Steve Skiff I'm like I'm not really familiar with him so he gave me a little bit of background and then he showed me the pair of cohorts that he had sitting there and I didn't even pick it up I'm like oh it's just it's too tiny I don't he's like no you surely take a good look at it and when I did I noticed an incredible shine and I've already got fingerprints on it from handling it here but a beautiful polish did I get my little scummy prints off there okay beautiful polish down the spine of the blade and a very high satin going all the way around the edges of the frame and then I did this and I felt that action and went oh my god this is really really amazing and the more I touched it the more I played with it the more amazed I was then I looked at that beautiful clean hand rub satin on the primary bevel and a very very high satin polish on the flats and that pronounced swedge going down the top back in a uh, uh, hand rub satin just sexy the finish work is amazing and then I noticed the slight cant to the blade which really makes it for a, uh, a good useful knife your, your hands are in a little bit less contact when you're trying to cut something across a flat surface great idea you guys know I'm, I, I'm really big on jimping. I want good positive jimping, but I don't want it to tear into your flesh. He's got great jimping here. And here's what's also fantastic. He's got jimping on the bottom side of the blade as well. So as you grip down on the knife, you've got jimping in both spots, and your hand isn't going to slide up and across the, the cutting surface. Speaking of cutting surface, really nice edge. Good and sharp, really clean cuts. Slices shit into ribbons. And I felt the balance and I felt the weight. I saw how slim it was. And I saw all of the fit and finish that went into this knife. And I said, you know what? For 500 bucks, and again, I beat him down to, to 475 um, I said, I, I, can't, I can't walk away from this. And I almost did. I put it back in the case and picked it up twice. And I was actually there with a, with a buddy of mine. And he couldn't quite get it either. He's like, this is totally not your style. And I, I kept trying to walk away. And I kept looking back. And I went, shit, fuck it. I got to buy this. What I love about this is it reminds me of the early on fascination that I had with the Chris Reeves Sebenza. And I've owned large Sebenzas and small Sebenzas. And this, in my opinion, is a Sebenza for the modern age. And I really am going to put it 100% dead on to a Sebenza, except it's slimmer and lighter. I prefer the way the finish work is done on this because this is a handmade custom. It's not a production knife like a, like a Chris Reeve. And again, you guys know I'm a Chris Reeve fan. Or I'm not a Chris Reeve fan. I'm a Sebenza fan. Um, I'm a fan of his work more, uh, more so than the, the person. I'm not knocking his knives at all. And I'm not saying the Sebenza is a bad knife. You know that. This is just so much more refined. So much more time went into the making of this knife. Every component is beautified. It's been touched in some way. Massaged in some way. Yeah, you take apart a Sebenza, you look at the inside, it's, you know, it's not finely finished and, and satin brushed and then anodized and stuff. And this is. The only thing that I like is he kept his design clean by doing the lock bar cutout for the frame lock on the interior, not on the exterior. So you don't have that big notch cut out there, so you've got a nice, flat, clean look. While I'm not typically a fan of spring clips, I think it works on this. It's a nice, small knife. It's a utilitarian knife, and this really has a utilitarian look. Would I prefer a nice, you know, sculpted clip on there? Sure! But it's not really necessary, and that would jack up the price. It'd probably be adding another $50 to the price, and there's no real need to. This thing is just incredible the way it is. And everybody that I handed this to at the Blade Show, when I said flick it open, give it a nice good flick, they were amazed. They're like, 
It shouldn't feel like this. It feels like a primetime flipper. Oh, it's, it's, it's really just that friggin' nice. It's so nice, as a matter of fact, that I am absolutely going to be hitting Steve up for a build on an Accomplice at some point soon. If you haven't seen the Accomplice, go to his website, which is skiffmadeblades.com. And the Accomplice is his three and a half inch flipper. Holy shit, I, I really, really, really want to get one of those. It's every bit as beautiful as this, but it's, it's a flipper. It's a, it's a really cool design. Great grind on the blade. It's a, well, I'm, you could tell I'm kind of excited. It's a really exciting looking knife, and I really want to get one in my pocket. Anyway, uh, so let's talk about, again, uh, the origins of the knife, the name, and, uh, and who Steve is. Basically, uh, Steve is a self-taught knife maker. He began back in 1998, and he just decided one day... I think he said he wanted to make his knife, uh, make his son a knife. So he just made a knife. And he's been doing it ever since. And he's gotten better and better and better to the point where not only is he a member of the Knife Makers Guild, which is a huge, stunning feat, but he's also a voting guild member, which is another very, very big deal. So that means people have a tremendous amount of respect for his work and for his opinion. And there you have it. So even though I had never previously heard of Steve Skiff, maybe you had never previously heard of Steve Skiff, uh, that doesn't mean that he is a no-name up-and-coming maker. He is very, very well established. I just had, it wasn't running in the same circles, apparently, that he was. He actually got pointers from Andre Thorburn in South Africa on his action, on how to make it so glass smooth, and how they're working with IKBS and the little tricks that they do inside of the knife just to make things a little bit faster and a little bit smoother and it really paid off this knife again half of the reason I felt I had to own it was for the amazing action and uh, yeah the, the work that he's put into it has certainly paid off look at he even polishes the uh, the top edge of the jimping just gorgeous yeah it's kind of a fingerprint magnet but whatever it's all right focus there we go Oh, just amazing. Truly, truly amazing. Now, his current wait time, uh, I talked to him about a week and a half ago. And uh, what, a, what a really nice gentleman. Uh, we didn't know each other from Adam, and uh, Scott was kind enough to uh, give him my contact info when I asked him to. And uh, Steve gave me a call, and we had a nice long chat. And, and uh, I, I, really, I really love guys that kind of live in their own little world. These knife makers that don't really venture out, don't look at a lot of other makers work, don't keep a really keen eye on what everybody else is doing. They just kind of lock themselves away and do their own thing. And that's what allows them to be so unique. And that's what I feel I'm getting here with this knife. It's something that's just a little bit different. Like I said, it's a refined Sabenza. It is beautiful fit and finish, astounding action, perfect build quality all the way around. And his current wait time, as I was getting ready to say, is about five to six months. So if you were to call him up or email him and say, hey, Steve, I saw the video and I really want to get a cohort or an accomplice. By the way, he's naming these basically as like partners. This is going to be your partner in your pocket and kind of going along with that, almost like a, uh, you know, like a, like a police theme. He was trying to think of different names to go along with that. So he's going to be naming the series like that cohort, accomplice, and, and, uh, and things like that. So if you have other ideas for him, uh, shoot him an email and let him know. Anyway, so if you see this and go, wow, i got to have one of these, it's going to be about five or six months. But you know what? That's really not bad. You know, the, we're on books for a year to two years, three years, five years. It's crazy. If you don't feel like waiting, um, the dealers that he goes through, uh, as I mentioned, uh, he deals with uh, Scott Gentile, which is BladeParade.com. He deals with Arizona Custom Knives. Everybody knows Arizona Custom Knives. And, uh, of course, uh if you go to a lot of shows, you'll probably bump into, especially like the New York shows, Paul Farina. Paul Farina, he's kind of a big name. Um, everybody kind of knows him. I've bought stuff from him even. I bought a bar stock of uh, Starfire Damascus a couple years ago, just wandering around the show. Um, really, really nice guy. Um, easiest way to get a hold of Paul is actually uh, his phone number, which I'm going to key into the description down here. So read the description of the video. 
uh, to contact Paul. So if you don't feel like waiting and you check out those dealers, maybe one of them will have one in stock. And yeah, get in line for that flipper. As I'm telling you right now, that accomplice is freaking amazing. So the reason why I think this is probably going to stay in my collection, it's probably not going to get carried as much as I'd like to because of the size, but there are times that I just go, I want a clean, simple knife. That's what I had bought my Mayo for. That's what I had bought my Sebenzas for. You know, it's really great to have something crazy and one of a kind and flashy and this and that. But every now and then, you want something that's going to be more practical than, you know, some of the fancier customs that we get into from time to time. And the one I've really been relying on the most really has been my Rockstead Shin. Uh, I've even sent it back to Japan for sharpening. I really only have to strop it once or twice a year. It just it maintains the edge so friggin' well. But I wanted something that I could wear, I could, excuse me, that I could carry when I'm wearing shorts because uh, I now live in Dallas, Texas, and it gets disgustingly hot here, and jeans are not always going to be appropriate. So if I'm wearing lightweight shorts, I want a lightweight knife to go with it. And I don't have a lot of super light knives, so I kind of went, well, this will work for that for sure. I miss having Sebenzas in my pocket, to be honest with you, but the luster of the Sebenza wore off after a while. And I'm probably going to get back and get more at some point, just because, well, you kind of always have to have a Sebenza if you're a real serious knife collector. This, to me, is a direct replacement. You have a knife that has a similar utilitarian look and feel to it, with a little bit of flair, just like Chris Reed does, a little bit of milling, a little bit of anodizing, make it a little bit special. But it's that hand finishing, all that beautiful hand work, and that refinement that allows it, in my opinion, to step several steps above. i got to be careful. I keep, it keeps trying to cut me. I'm not going to be able to replicate the look really here um, in my little studio. But when you go out in the sunlight with this knife, and you just kind of move it like this, the light that dances off the polished areas versus the flat satin areas is incredible. It's almost like, well, and I don't like to use the term because it's usually um, used in a derogatory manner when we're talking about custom knives, but it, it is like a piece of pocket jewelry because of the way it shimmers and it glimmers in the light. However, I don't really think anybody's going to have a problem using this. Now, it's a few bucks more than a small Sebenza. I'll give it that. You could buy a small Sebenza for a little bit less money. It may be a little bit thicker in your hand. Do keep that in mind. This is going to be a slimmer profile. But this is a lot lighter weight, so easier to carry. It's a lot more beautiful. It's a true, full-on custom. He even does his own heat treat. I mean, that is how custom this knife really is. And I've focused a lot lately on some production knives, like the React knives and whatnot. And I thought it was really important to come out here with something that was a full-blown, full-out custom. Even down to in-house heat treat. It's a big deal. I'm not losing my focus, guys. Believe me. Actually, the next videos you're going to see from me, I'm going to have a beautiful uh, Pete Skike, which you probably have not heard of yet. You're going to dig it if you're into the dire wear and uh, Medford big giant overbuilt knife thing. Uh, what else have I got? I've got a couple more things, a couple more customs i got to show to you guys. Oh, a Stephen Kelly that'll blow your mind. I think it's important that we try to balance our collection. You're going to have your fancy flashy knives, you're going to have your in-betweeners, and you're going to have the ones that you just want to have as a daily carry companion, cohort, accomplice. See the whole thing coming around there? <laughs> I knew you'd get it. It's just friggin' great, man. Now, if this were a three and a half inch, it would be the perfect knife for me entirely. Maybe someday we'll see a slightly larger variation. But for right now, three inch blade, seven inches overall, super lightweight. I bet this thing isn't... Man, if it's four and a half ounces, that's pushing it. What a beauty. All right, last, final, quick, super awesome, tight look in HD. And then we're going to sign off out of here. 
Wow, that is just gorgeous. I kind of feel like everybody needs to get one of those. And at that price, for a custom, great job, great job, great value. Yeah, if you've only ever bought production knives for $150, $200, $500 is a shit ton of money to spend on a small folding knife. I get that. But those of us that live in the custom world and we're always trying to get the next coolest, greatest thing, we're spending thousands of dollars on a knife. So when you hear $500, yeah, that sounds really affordable. Anyway, uh, thanks guys for watching as always. Thank you to Steve Skiff for taking the time to call me and give me some background information on this and uh, for making such an utterly beautiful knife. And I hope to certainly own more of his in the future. And uh, I will see you guys on the next video.